Joining me today is Daryl Perry, who is the chairman of the New Hampshire Libertarian Party. Uh, Daryl, I, I want to keep um, on, on, on some policy issues. I, I think I got sort of marijuana. Uh, you guys would be, there shouldn't be laws governing the use of that. Correct. Um, highways, bridges, should there, is there a role for government um, in highways and bridges, roads, upkeep for that? Some libertarians believe so. Other libertarians believe that that would be best left to the free market, to where you know there are businesses, uh, Walmart, Target, Best Buy, and they would not exist absent customers, and they would not exist if there weren't a way for customers to wind up getting to their businesses. They, so they, they would work to figure out a way to. Have that they're happen. incentivized to make sure that you know customers can get to their stores, that products can get to their stores. So. You know, they, they could find a free market solution. And one thing that's interesting where this is a common question that libertarians get asked of, but who would build the roads? Well, there are private companies building the roads now. The question wouldn't be who will build them, it's who will fund them. And I think that we can do better than you know funding them through this government entity to where we live in New England to where you know there's potholes and all kinds of stuff that sometimes don't get fixed for years. I, as a journalist, have read numerous stories of people that have fixed the potholes on their own and then been arrested for improving government property without permission. So, you know, even with the government controlling roads, they don't always fix them. And when private individuals try to fix them, they wind up going to jail for it. So, so the, the, the New Hampshire party, it would be, that should be privatized. Yes. I mean, that, I mean, just, uh, that, that's actually, you know, like, I, I believe it, well, I, I don't think roads specifically are mentioned in either platform, okay. oh. but we have the omissions plank that says that just because we don't talk about something, something doesn't, doesn't mean okay. that we support government being involved in it. You know, uh, what about uh, Medicare, Medicaid, um, Social Security? Uh, where would you stand on, on those sort of safety net issues? Governments should not be involved. And if you look back in history before you know Medicare and Social Security were instituted by the federal government, you saw a lot of like fraternal organizations that would wind up providing these sorts of services. And to some extent, there still are fraternal organizations that do provide some of these. But it's definitely not to the same level because a lot of people think, well, why should I donate to this organization when we've got the government that's doing it? So if you got the government out of the business of you know, providing money for grandmas, then you know, people would wind up, you know what, I really like grandma, I'm going to throw money so that grandma doesn't starve and so that grandma stays warm in the winter. Marijuana, uh, 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 right to life issues, uh, pro-choice issues, um, roads and sort of bridges, military, would, would a libertarian support uh, uh, the federal army? Uh, there are some libertarians that do and other libertarians that believe that there should not be a standing army. And even the constitutionalists within the libertarian party generally oppose the standing army because the U.S. Constitution says that no appropriation shall be made for a military for more than two years. What about the courts? That, that's one of the things to where if you, you know, look at, and I've seen charts where it shows what classic liberals believe, and libertarians are generally considered to be classic liberals. And courts and schools are one of those things with asterisks next to them of some libertarians and classic liberals believe that government should be involved in that, and others believe that they should not be. And I, I'm, you know, kind of on the fence to where if the only thing that the courts were doing were prosecuting people that have actually wound up uh, having victims, I would not be opposed to that. But if you walk into any court across New Hampshire and probably Vermont, Massachusetts, and Maine, you're going to see a lot of people that are in for victimless offenses, uh, open container of alcohol, possession of marijuana. So, but, but, but courts would be for civil and for true victim offenses. Is, is that a fair assessment? Uh, I, I'm not really sure that we need government to handle the civil stuff. I, I think that you could have private arbiters okay. handle a lot of the civil stuff. Oh, I'm, I'm out of time again in this segment. When we return, we're going to continue our conversation, and I'm going to focus on schools briefly and, the, and then move to other issues. So please stay with us.